call this uh, meeting to order the City Commission of Rio Grande City, Texas, Wednesday, September 13th, 2017, approximately 6.03 p.m. here in Commission Chambers, 5332 East U.S. Highway 83, Suite A, uh, here in Rio Grande City, Texas. At this time, we'll have the invocation by Commissioner Garza, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Ramirez. Okay, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to get together today to conduct city business. We thank you for all the wonderful blessings that you've bestowed on this city. Thank you, Lord, for for keeping us safe and and guiding us through uh, our hard times. We ask you, Lord, that you bless those people in that were in these hurricanes uh, way, we ask that uh, that you bless them and take care of them and that they may be able to recover very fast. We ask you, Lord, for to bless them with some rain. And Lord, we ask you that uh, you bless our first responders and that you bless our soldiers in arms way and our police officers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the visible, for liberty and justice for all. On the United States of America, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and the visible. Next uh, business and orders item 1B, roll call and finding a quorum. Ms. Peña. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Villarreal. Here. Mayor Rosen Garza. Here. Commissioner Salinas. Commissioner Salinas is absent. Commissioner Ramirez. Here. Commissioner Jones. Here. You have a quorum here. Thank you. Next is item 1C, departmental reports. Mr. Perez. Uh, Ms. Uh, Guillen? No, okay, not, not here. here. Oh. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Hello, Ms. Um, we have a couple of items uh, for consideration on your agenda this evening. Uh, we'll get to those uh, at that point of the meeting, but I want to remind everyone that we have a, a grand opening for Idea Academy scheduled tomorrow morning. So if you are uh, interested in attending, I know we've received some RSVPs. Uh, we'll be happy to put you on the list as a guest for that event tomorrow. Um, in addition to that, we continue to move uh, our planning ahead for the next fiscal year and the projects that are coming. And so I will entertain any questions you may have of me at this point. All right. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ms. Hernandez? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. I just want to remind everybody that this Saturday we're having our third annual Viva Mexico event. I know some of you have signed up to be judges. We're going to have different contests going on, so hopefully you all can make it. Um, Diana Uribe reached out to the Ciudad Camargo, so we're gonna have representation from them, some of their queens, a banda, and some dancers from, from that area as well. So um, hopefully everybody can attend and we get a good turnout and good weather. And um, after that event, we are working on the Unexplained Mysteries Conference, and it'll take place in the Tijerina Courtyard. Christian Salinas is working on getting um, some presenters, the authors, we'll do the haunted trolley tours. So. We're excited. I love Halloween. <laughs> How's the uh, Lucha Libre coming yeah, along? Lucha Libre is coming along. They will be there, and they'll be there to take pictures with everybody. So. Oh, great. The ring will be there. Who will be the main attraction for the Lucha Libre? The main Libre? attraction for besides the... Besides the mayor. Well, besides the <laughs> mayor. Yeah, don't we? <laughs> and you need to come in full costume already, as I said, to make sure you have your mascara because you Don't can't. we have the rock coming in? Is, is that not something? You can be the rock of All right, I think the rock was committed to coming out. <laughs> the, the, the two 
Um, well, most well known is uh, Pirata Morgan and El Hijo de Mascara Sagrada. So they will right. be. Oh, very good. Be there. <laughs> so we're hoping they don't toss each other into the street because uh, <laughs> the ring is towards the end of the street. So that came up Ooh. in our coordination. <laughs> so hopefully, and the kids' uh, costume contest because they come in traje típico. Um, we have that contest and the Jalapeño and the Grito, the first place winners win $100 each. So. Jalapeño eating and grito. We need some RGC representation. We Mr. Usually Reyes, have Jesus are you getting Reyes, prepared? We, Mr. Reyes, is he Mr. getting prepared Reyes for that? Mr. Reyes is there, but he lost against a female last year, so I don't know if he's going to want to do it again. <laughs> hey, this year is going to be different. Tell him you need uh, to right. redeem yourself, so we'll see how it goes. Right. <laughs> so, hope to see you all this Saturday. Very good, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Mr. Perales. Mr. Perales. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. Mr. Perez. Uh, today we're happy to recognize two athletes that tremendously did a lot of accomplishments this past track season. Um, and I'd like to introduce uh, there, uh, Miss Serena Ramirez, she can come up, please. Oh. Uh, Serena Ramirez is a seventh grader at Veterans Middle School. This year's Serena's fifth year participating in the shot put in her first year on discus for our summer track program. In 2014, Serena placed third at Games of Texas at the 10U at College Station with a throw of 22.4 feet. In 2015, she placed third at Games of Texas at 12U at College Station with a throw of 31.9 feet. And in 2016, she placed first at the Games of Texas 12U at the McAllen with a throw of 36.1 feet. Yes. That's good. That's just one paper. That's just one. <laughs> one medal. Uh, Serena, uh, this year as she competed at the Alamo Invitational at the shot put, she got second place with a 39.3 feet on shot put on discus. She got second place, and again, this is her first year in discus. Uh, she she got second place with a 96 uh, feet throw. Uh, in, in our Invitational here in Rio Grande City. She placed second in shot put and second in discus. At the PSJ Invitational on the shot put, she placed second. Uh, at the Far North High School Stadium uh, Invitational shot put, she also got second. Uh, at the regionals track meet, uh, she in the shot put, she got second. In the discus, she got six. And on the, state, uh, in the games of Texas, on the shot put, she got third place with a feet of 39.3 feet, and on discus, it was 97 feet. So today, we'd like to uh, recognize Taff send us a plaque, and the Texas Amateur Federation is proud to recognize Serena Ramirez as a Rio Grande City Parks and Recreation Female Athlete of the Year. Oh, very so, good. Stay. Yeah, we're going to have a 
Hey, I heard you. We also recognize our parents as well. Yes. <clears throat> we are. We recognize your parents. Yes, I just did. Uh, th th these are their parents. Uh, Okay. Congratulations. 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 Awesome. Very proud. Uh, and our next athlete, well, I can't say much about this kid. His perseverance, his dedication, uh, the hard work that he puts on. It's amazing when you see him at his height. And sooner or later, he's going to catch up on the old record that one of us held for a long time but no names yet. <laughs> Who would that be? <laughs> uh, his name is Omar the Jet Careño. Uh, awesome. Omar has won so many accomplishments that uh, let, me go, let me go through all of them. Uh, Omar, uh, at the Mercedes Invitational, on the 800 meter, he got first place. On the 400 meter, he got first place. On the 200 meter, he got first place. In the Alamo Invitational, Omar in the 800 meter got first place. 400 meter, first place. 200 meter, first place. So you know where we're going on this, right? <laughs> <laughs> as, as when we hosted it here in Rio Grande City, once again, Omar on the 800 meter, first place. On the 400 meter, first place. And on the 200 meter, first place. So uh, at the PSJ Invitational, the 10U Badman, uh, Omar on the 800 got first place. On the 400 meter, he got second. And on the 200, he got third. In the PSJ North High School, uh, 8U, Omar on the 800 got first. On the 400 meter, he got first. On the 200 meter, he got first. Right? Just making sure. And then uh, in the regional track meet at the 8U, in the 800 meter, Omar got first place. On the 400 meter, he got second. On the 200 meter, he got first place. And on the uh, McAllen Invitational, the 10U, on the 400 meter, Omar got third. On the 200 meter, he got first. And on the 100 meter, he got second. At the state of Texas, the games, uh, the games of Texas, on the 800 meter, Omar got second place. And then he went over, his parents took him to compete at the State Games of America in Grand Rapids, Michigan, on the 8U Peewee. And Omar got the on the 800 meter. He won the first national champion. Wow. On the 400 meter, he got second place. And on the on 200 meter, he got fourth. Omar, Omar, uh, other recognitions. He's he's been uh, for the Region Two Athlete of the Year. Games of America Athlete of the Year, Tab State of Texas Athlete of the Year, and he also got recognized as an All-American Athlete by the Games of America. Those are the big accomplishments. <laughs> of so, so today, Omar gets another award. I don't know where he's going to place this one at. <laughs> he go, he, he, again, it's the Texas Amateur Athletic Federation is proud to recognize Omar Carreño Jr. as the Rio Grande City Parks and Recreation Male Athlete of the Year 2017. Very good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Ray.
when you got your plate, did you stumble? <laughs> <laughs> family they're back there again congratulations to Choperales family members certainly the athletes obviously it takes a lot of time effort and dedication to the sport so cannot say that enough congratulations and certainly look forward to continued uh, progress and and uh, I mean again it is so awesome to have you all represent our community so again just keep it up excellent work yes. great job Good job. <laughs> Next uh, business in order, or do we have anyone else, Mr. No, no. It's going to be short, sir. All right. <laughs> All right, moving on to item two, consent agenda. Have letter A, approval of departmental travel request. Letter B, approval of minutes from previous meetings. Letter C, approval of action taken at the meeting of RGCDC held on August 15th. And letter D, approval of action taken at the meeting of the Kelsey Bass Museum and Event Center. She looks awesome. Anything on these uh, agenda items? And no, okay. Commissioners at this time, entertain a motion. Is there any other discussion on those? I don't know more discussion, Mayor. I uh, motion to approve uh, items A, B, C, and D of consent agenda. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next is item three, letter A, second reading and adoption of ordinance number 2017-5, amending the budget for fiscal year 2016-2017. Mayor Commissioner, this is the second reading. Um, almost 30 days ago, we uh, passed the first reading, and this was to amend the transfer of uh, funds from the sanitation to the general fund to offset some of the shortfalls awesome in revenue. Okay. Do we have a motion? I so move, Mayor. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Ramirez, second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I opposed. She carries next. This, uh, 3B, first reading and approval of ordinance number 2017-6, City of Rio Grande City Municipal Budget for fiscal year 2017-2018. 3B. Good evening, Mayor, Councilman. I, do. Uh, I left the paper there on top of your, <clears throat> where you're at. That's a summary of all the changes that we're issuing for the, for the budget that was uh, presented on August uh, 11th. 
uh, basically it's uh, most of them are changes on uh, salaries and benefits that weren't uh, <coughs> correct at the beginning so we made the adjustment and corrected those there's a couple of other adjustments there that needed uh, monies moved around on uh, several departments so we moved that money around and on the water department we had to increase the sewer collections uh, we had increased on the on the previous budget that we presented the first time we increased the water revenues so that in turn makes the sewer go up also so we we had to increase that one to come up with a with a balanced budget so we did that and we made a couple of movements that we had done before with we had sat down with uh, Araceli on the water department on what she needed there budgeted so we had to find the money to come up with that so yeah. the budget is, is was filed as a balanced budget and we worked carefully on it mr Perez, mr Dr. myself and staff uh, knowing that we have shortcomings and, and revenue uh, so we, we did miracles there so, and um, it's presented and throughout the time that it was filed on august the 11th to now of course it was reviewed by departments, and uh, Mr. Ganton further reviewed on some of the balances for uh, bonds and some of our financing. So those are some of the changes. Uh, this is the first reading. Second reading will be on the 28th. Uh, at that time, there could possibly be some additional changes. Uh, adjustments. And adjust adjustments to. So this is the time options. between now and the 28th to, of course, to consider all other options or changes that we need to do before the 28th. Uh, so again, in looking at all the departments to make sure we revisit all the numbers and if there's any changes to make those changes as we move forward. Commissioners, looking at all that. Mm -hmm. um, does support the, the tax rate that is being proposed for y'all's consideration for the next uh, agenda item. So the, uh, it's the file budget with the changes. I think each one of you got a, a buy right. Yes that Mr. Cantu just mentioned. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Commissioner? Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Okay. In, during in between uh, the two readings, but, uh, okay. I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, to approve ordinance number 2017-6, uh, the first reading. Uh, mm -hmm of the Riverbank City Municipal Budget for Physical Year 2017-2018. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Garza. I'll second the motion, Mayor. I have a second by Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you. There is specific language on the motion. Let me see on the motion. I don't see the specific language here, or is it? <coughs> Well, those, yeah, that was my tax. Does the motion include your changes that were presented by Mr. Gunty? I'm sorry? The motion to adopt the budget with the changes that Mr. Gunty presented? Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion to approve the budget considering the, the uh, with the changes. Mentioned. Uh, All right, and we have a second, second by motion. Commissioner Ramirez. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Motion carries. Next, uh, business and orders item 3C, first reading and approval of ordinance number 20. Thank you, Mr. Gunther. 2017-7, levying ad valorem taxes for maintenance and operations and for debt service of the municipal government of the city of Rio Grande City, Texas, for tax year ending December 31st, 2017. The adoption of the tax rate that we have had the two public hearings on um, the 28th and August 28th and September 6th. Uh, we're keeping the same tax rate as this year. And uh, it is decimal points higher than the effective. That was what triggered the two public hearings. But it's the same as this one. Yeah. Uh, and the language is on there as far as for the motion. Okay, if there are no more discussion, Mayor, I move that the uh, property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of uh, 0.497579, which is effectively a 0.86% increase in the tax rate. 
Okay, we have a motion to approve. Second. Have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? She carries next. Business and orders item four, resolutions, letter A. Discussion and possible action to approve resolution number 2017-18 to waive fees and or charges to affordable homes of South Texas for their project to be located in Trophy Plex. Item 4A. Commissioner, did you have a resolution and it has the value of the permit fees that are being waived? This is in support of 50 homes that will be constructed over five years. It is a collaboration with the Portable Homes of South Texas and the Economic Development Corporation. Um, the amount is 17,770. They were asking also for a waiver of the work uh, fees, but those have already been paid for by the developer as per the subdivision rules. Uh, they are ready to start. They'll be having some pre-conferences for local contractors and vendors of suppliers, and they will have pre-qualifications for potential homeowners on October 28th. So it's going fast, and um, we are still working on the grant where we can assist with down payment assistance this coming year. Okay. So that you're looking at October 28th for pre-qualification. They've requested this room uh, where they can meet with individual families and go over their finances to see if they qualify. Um, as you all remember in some of the presentations, they have a 2% foreclosure because they actually counsel them and uh, are work with them throughout their mortgage until they're stabilized. Uh, it is a great benefit to the community. For those families that fall within the gap of, yeah. you know, regular normal financing or <clears throat> excuse me, some other programs that offer very low low income mm -hmm. assistance. Great. And at this point, as uh, far nothing, as nothing changed as far as our discussion in our previous meeting. <clears throat> no, sir. This is the part of the city. Uh, EDC already took uh, their uh, action with the resolution no. of the participation of $5,000 per home at the time of closing. So this yeah. is the city's participation uh, on this project. Yeah. Uh, I know Ms. Guillen is here, but you need information on that part of the EDC matching. No, it, it is definitely a good program and certainly look forward to having those families uh, the only thing, of course, is getting all this pre-qualification and making sure that people are informed and here and those that want to be considered. What's the price them. range? I, think it's, uh, I forgot. I know they just told us the price range. Well, I know that uh, the three-bedroom, two-bath, uh, uh, including lot and all fees all associated with it is at $113,000. Um, that's a the projected budget, but the construction costs of some of the homes range from 65500 to 71500 That's not including the, the lot amount. No, I mean the income-wise of, of oh, people uh, applying for it. What was the range? I don't remember the exact amount, but I know it's for low to low to mod. I'm just asking that question because I've been approached by it. This work's getting around already, so they were just asking. I have a feeling it's going to be more than 10 people that yeah. qualify, but I guess they'll hold on for the next round for the next year. Mm -hmm. right. uh, if we are successful with our down payment assistance grant uh, in the first six months of next year, then we can maybe speed up this process. Yeah. Uh, they are working on another set. <coughs> they purchased 82 lots, 50 are for low to low to mod income families and the other ones will be for those that fall just slightly above and don't qualify for the assistance, but they have another range of homes that mm -hmm. they can move into. We definitely want home owners uh, because it brings, obviously, our tax base grows and pride to the neighborhood. Right. That, that development is going to be next to what's the last the development last, on the north end? The last on the, development on, on the, the east side. Yes, sir. Room. It's not gated, correct. I, I saw them cleaning it out already. There's already some homes because it was a 96 tract uh, subdivision. So the lots that were left over were 82 lots. Good. Very good. Entertain a motion. 
Okay, so move here. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Ramirez. Second. Have a second by Commissioner Jones. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed. She carries next is item 4B, discussion and possible action to approve resolution number 2017-19 to support and participate in the South Texas Development Council for the period of October 1st, 2017 to September 30, 2018. 4B. Mayor, you have a resolution that's uh, in the section there uh, outlining the uh, approach to uh, join the uh, South Texas Development Council. It's also referred us to the COG. Um, there is a membership fee of $4,008, which is due uh, October 1st. Yeah. Uh, City of Rio has been a member of the COP for quite some time. Since the region was established. Yeah, so this is just in continuation of that membership. The benefits of this uh, organization is to what, qualify for grants or what exactly is uh... the... Texas so Department of Agriculture, Texas Community Development Grant uh, goes <coughs> down from HUD to TDA, TDA. to STDC to the city. We've been, and that's what we've been using to pay so much fees. Okay. Yeah. And the cameras also that we got for the illegal Those are part of those grants yeah. also? Yes. Correct. Okay. Very good. The return on the investment has been good <coughs> participating yes. in this. So, all right, do we entertain a motion? Six. That's a moment. Okay. Second. Have a motion by Commissioner Ramirez. We have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Motion carries. Next is item 4C, discussion and possible action, approving resolution number 2017-20, supporting the continuation of the Federal Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals Program. This is 4C. Mayor, under 4C, uh, our attorney has uh, helped us in putting together a resolution uh, in support of DACA, and uh, this is just a city's way of saying that we uh, support these folks that are here for obviously the right reasons and they've been here for quite some time. Uh, they probably, if they were sent back, they wouldn't know anyone back in their homeland. <clears throat> and at this time, since this uh, resolution certainly has some national consequences or national attention, I'm gonna go ahead and read the resolution in supporting the continuation of the Federal Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program Whereas the city of Rio Grande City embraces diversity and inclusion while recognizing the significant contributions by dreamers to our municipality, to the state of Texas, and to the United States of America. And whereas September 5th, 2017, President Donald Trump ordered an end to the program known as Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, whereas Congress is being given six months to determine the legal status an ultimate fate of approximately 800,000 immigrants known as dreamers who were brought into the United States as children and who are eligible under the existing DACA program to apply for temporary residence in the United States. And whereas an undocumented immigrant is eligible to claim DACA status, if as of June 15, 2012, the individual was under the age of 31, came to the United States before turning age 16, lived continuously in the United States for five years since June 15, 2007, and either has a high school diploma or GD certification, or has been honorably discharged from the military or is currently enrolled in school, and whereas applicants for DACA status are fingerprinted and rigorously vetted by the Department of Homeland Security for any criminal history or threat to national security. And whereas the city of Rio Grande City believes that it is imperative to support those young individuals now burdened with fear of deportation and to provide them with a path to permanent citizenship. Now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and the city commissioners urge President Trump, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local leaders to support the continuation of the Federal Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals Program in providing temporary relief from deportation and to create a permanent path to legal residency for DACA recipients. This time, do we have a uh, motion? <laughs> okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Garza. Have a second by Commissioner Ramirez. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed? Motion carries. Next, uh, business and orders item 4D, discussion and possible action to <coughs> approve resolution number 2017-21, authorizing a project of the Rio Grande City 4B Economic Development Corporation related to planning and development of streets and roads. 4D. Yes, sir, Mayor, um, Commissioners, the Rio Grande City DC has approved a project for the purpose of planning for the development of streets by the Texas Department of Transportation. This is a project uh, in partnership with the state of Texas as well as uh, the city of Rio Grande City. And section 505.158 of the Texas Government Code requires the city adopt a resolution authorizing this project after giving uh, this resolution two readings. It is our recommendation uh, that you consider and approve resolution number 2017-21. Very good. Yeah. All right. I, so I, have, I have a question. Okay. Yes, sir. In, in, uh, in regard to the total mm -hmm. amount mm -hmm. uh, that has been proposed as, uh, as shown here on the agenda, I thought that we had only agreed to the uh, environmentals only. It is environmental and plants. Uh, our portion uh, is estimated to be valued at 420000 and the state's contribution for the roadway is at $4 million. Well, you know, that, I, don't, I don't remember the planning. I remember the, the environmental part, but I don't remember the planning. The state had initially asked us for environmentals and later returned and asked for the plans. And we've been working with our city engineering on the, the schematics for that. And we have a breakdown of the scope of the work that's gonna be involved in getting those plans ready for the state to take their uh, step in construction. This isn't a project in where the city would be providing the construction, it would be the state of Texas through the Texas Department and, of Transportation. And it says up to 420. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean that if there, that's what it's gonna cost them. Right, yeah. that's, that's an estimation that we have received as far as what the project planning and environmentals will cost us, uh, but it could be less. We just have that amount that was uh, proposed to the EDC board for consideration and approved at our August meeting. Is there a timeline, Talent? The state of Texas has these funds available for this project through their fiscal year uh, that ends in September of 2019. So it is uh, incumbent upon us to start some of the work um, so that they uh, can initiate their portion of spending on the project before the uh, fiscal year ends on their end. Now this is a project that would include gaining a street, Mesquite being extended all the way to 755, or uh, Pete Diaz. Right, so the project involves the construction of roadways joining the newly realigned 755 road to our international port of entry, mm -hmm. in addition to alternate routes to and from the uh, commercial <clears throat> center of the city. So you'll have a roadway that, uh, a proposed roadway that goes out into Pete Diaz that would take traffic to the west end of town. Uh, you have a roadway directly south of the 755 realignment that takes traffic northbound and an alternate route uh, that takes, uh, diverts traffic from the port of entry uh, east uh, between um, the Walmart and the shopping development that's next door. Right. And this involves us uh, working in collaboration with the property owners who are aware of the project and uh, considering of the donation that they must make so that the city uh, and the state are able to take the steps necessary. Um, there will be some conveyance of land to get mm -hmm. that going. Um, and they've all, all parties have agreed that it's beneficial for the city and transportation in and around that corridor, which is expected to see a high volume of traffic following the development plans that we have for that area north of Walmart. Yeah. 
Who are the engineers? We haven't selected an engineer, <coughs> sir. And who's going to do the environmental? <coughs> that uh, would have to be selected by the EDC by way of the city engineer, or we uh, seek uh, environmental uh, through independent um, request for qualifications. I know that we've had meetings, Mr. Perez, uh, Alinda, myself, and uh, Gilbert Gracia, Alvineri Gracia from TechStot. Um, and they did mention that they were preparing what they called an advanced funding agreement. Mm -hmm. What we, uh, in the past, uh, have executed for the Los Olmos, uh, uh, not the Los Olmos project, but that Redwood, and for the Abasolo. Um, there will be participation required from the city at that time. I don't know what it is. They haven't come up to that amount. But he did mention that they were already starting with that agreement. Uh, when it's going to come down, we don't have an idea. But, but as far but as... But these numbers that hadn't been discussed with the city or with the EDC, have they? It is true that only the environmental had been on the work plan. Yeah. Uh, what they wanted was a shovel-ready project, but um, I know that we, we've asked for a breakdown on the 420 because there was no... The last uh, breakdown on the budget was 1% uh, to the Star County Industrial Foundation sometime back last year. Uh, we'll see. But uh, you are correct, Commissioner, that the initial approval had only been for environmental. Yeah. I, don't, I don't recall either. The plan, and I and the thing is, is that I just got the agenda uh, packet, and and I hadn't read beyond the agenda item. So you know, I wasn't aware of of, of this, and I, I mean, I think that we should be at least informed and be prepared to to be here to to make a a decision on, on this because I, I was only under the understanding of that we were only doing the environmental. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we want to proceed then? They will decide them, um, you want to table it? <laughs> table it and then go back or what, what do you? I mean, this is a big project, I mean, obviously it's a four million dollar project. So I think it's a, it's a good investment obviously uh, for our infrastructure. Um, again, I, you know, like Commissioner said, I think there must be more, I guess, discussion about the, the expenses, but uh, I think it's a small amount compared to the $4 million that so TechStot is going to be investing in our community. Um, that's, uh, that's I agree with Commissioner Ramirez, too. When you're looking at $4 million of infrastructure that's coming to the city, I know our take would be 420, you're up to 420, right. but if I understand correctly, we're gaining the street, too, so we're not purchasing no, it, it, the street it, for it, Mesquite it, extending to PTS. The project is, is uh, well right. worth it. Thing is, I, you know, it, all of this catches me by surprise because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't aware. That, that's basically what I'm saying. And we haven't had a formal presentation from text or anything like that. I think that uh, we need to have one in the future, but uh, I think that just, I guess, us showing support uh, for this project and um, again, and you know, okay. the, there's a push for promoting the cross uh, here at the Rio Grande City instead of anywhere else because of the uh, I, short I, time I, wait I, period. I'm, I'm aware of the project. I know where, what they're trying to do. <clears throat> okay, so but, I'll, but I'll take it as it reads here up to the 420000 and if we don't have to spend it all, then, you know. Do we think it'll be the 420 again, or could it be less? For sure it can't be more because it's up to, but right. could it be and, less? And of course, it's, it's always important that we look out for ways to, to provide a cost savings to the city. So if there is an opportunity to reduce those, these costs, I will obviously be uh, looking out for those. Well, next time I want to be better informed of, of uh, things like this because and, and I'm, not, I'm not complaining about the project. I know <laughs> the project is worth it. I mean, for the return we're getting for the 420, is it's the way that I'm finding out of the project. Understood, Commissioner. But I'm, 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 I'm gonna agree to it, but, I, but I, wanna, I wanna come and sit down and talk to somebody about it. 
If I, I want to take it as it reads here up to 420. If I need to schedule uh, a meeting with TxDOT to come and provide a formal presentation, I could do so. Um, and I could certainly uh, get that. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to speak to the residents of that subdivision? So obviously this project would, uh, because of the nature of the project, is going to involve some public hearing. Uh, obviously we want to get input from the neighborhood, make sure that they understand the nature of the project. Um, there are certainly benefits to some of the concerns the neighborhood has about being able to access their neighborhood. Uh, currently, there is uh, time and time again we hear there. Is are, that part of the plan? I'm sorry. What part? Public the, uh, the subdivision next yes, to Walmart. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so we understand that the neighborhood has its concerns about traffic uh, going in and out of their neighborhood and the inability for them to make safe turns in and out, uh, which is why this plan provides for a safer alternative for them to enter and exit their, their neighborhood. At the same time, uh, lessening the congestion uh, that we would see with that neighborhood coming in on that roadway on 83. Uh, where they're currently at. But it would certainly uh, require input from the neighborhood and we would entertain uh, public hearings to have their, their uh, comments. Are, are we going to have an input on uh, who gets selected to do the environmental and the planning? Well, I don't know about the engineering, but the environmental? The planning uh, for that, yes. Um, anything that we're having to um, put on the table for this project to be realized by the state of Texas would allow us to select. They, they just, like Ms. Baez mentioned, they want a shovel-ready project. That means environmental testing and construction plans. They will take that and go out for bids for their construction of the roadway. So we have the ability to select the engineer, to select the um, uh, professionals required for the testing that's gonna be uh, necessary. Consideration would have to be made for the residents for the sound barrier issues because mm -hmm. of the traffic going through there. Right. And the neighborhood will be gaining the second entrance, exiting well, entrance. Well, people have been suffering for years there in that neighborhood. Right. And the public hearings, yes, Commissioner, we're going to have to make sure because obviously moving heavy traffic might have some impact well, on the. Well, there, man. Well, that's what I mean. When you have heavy, when you have heavy traffic, will it be impacting those homes? And people need to be aware. So, we need to make sure those public hearings and have them have a voice and and see what direction they want to go. Especially if the opportunity is there to have a second exit and entrance. Mm -hmm. And the question is going to be that. And we possibly have, too, if, if, if possible. Well, and that's where we need to have them involved and, and move from there. Is acquisition part of the 420? No. Um, the acquisition of the land, so you have one, two uh, parties involved in the land that uh, must be dedicated for this project, and both uh, understand that right. this must be a conveyance to, I believe it's the city, so that we can initiate the processes of turning that over to the state. Once this roadway is complete, uh, uh, going northbound on 755, that stretch there becomes uh, property of the state. Right now, Pete Diaz is considered <laughs> South 755, mm -hmm. and so then this road would become South, south. 755, and mm -hmm. we'd have to take the maintenance of Pete Diaz. I mm -hmm. think that's one of the discussions that came up at one of the meetings. But again, on the extension of Mesquite, we would not have to purchase any land in order to create, to no, build that road. In It'll other be words, donated. that's a part of the agreement between multiple parties. Mm -hmm. That's where the city would not have to spend any money on acquisition of land. Correct. Um, okay, so what's the motion? I move the approval, Mayor. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner <coughs> Ramirez. I'll second it with the, condi with the conditions I mentioned. Okay, so we have a, a second. And uh, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor signify by saying ah. Aye. 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 Did you get the motion correctly? <clears throat>
All those opposed? Same sign? Okay, motion carries. Next item in order is uh, 4E. Um, yes. 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 yes we're, am I the correct one? Uh, yes, you are. Discussion and possible action to approve <coughs> resolution number 2017-22, sure. authorizing a project of the Rio Grande City 4B Economic Development Corporation related to providing affordable housing to the city of Rio Grande City. So the Rio Grande City has approved a project um, uh, for the purpose of expanding affordable housing and helping prospective home buyers in Rio Grande City achieve their dream of home, home ownership at the price that they can afford. Uh, as referenced earlier in a previous resolution, it was discussed Affordable Homes of South Texas has an intent to build up to 50 affordable homes in uh, the Trophyplex area. They are looking at investing approximately $5.8 million into the uh, development and uh, are estimated to create 150 new jobs in the city. Uh, again, I will remind you that our uh, requirement is to get a resolution uh, authorized by the city after giving it two separate readings, and I'm recommending uh, commissioner's approval. Okay, do we entertain a motion or any other questions before we... Okay, so entertain a motion at this time. I'm just trying to read up there. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Jones. That's right, a motion. Have a second by Commissioner Ramirez. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Aye. Motion carries. Next is item 4F, discussion and possible action to approve resolution number 2017-23, authorizing a project of the Rio Grande <coughs> City 4B Economic Development Corporation related to construction of drainage improvements to the Arroyo Los Olmos. Yes, sir. Uh, earlier I mentioned uh, the project we have involved uh, north of 83 next to the newly uh, realigned 755. Uh, the Rio Grande City DC has approved a project to uh, match EDA grant funds to the city of Rio Grande City for the purpose of constructing drainage improvements to the Arroyo Los Olmos and uh, those drainage improvements uh, to be approved by FEMA. Uh, these projects, uh, uh, this project and, and its improvements are found by the EDC Board of Directors to promote new and expanded business development in the city and again uh, requires your uh, authorization and adoption of a resolution and I'm recommending uh, approval for this uh, resolution 2017-23. Uh, Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Garza. We have a second by Commissioner Ramirez. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. aye opposed. She carries next. Is item five, city manager's report. Letter A, discussion and possible action to approve the proposal for a sanitation. Thank you, Ms. Guillen. Sanitation rate study with CAPEX. Commissioner, in your packet, you have a proposal from Cape Consulting Group, uh, represented by Mr. Jeff Snowden in the office. Uh, they are currently in the process of doing a rate study for our water and wastewater. Uh, the last time it was done was in uh, 2012, so we do this every four years. Uh, the study takes into account, you know, uh, the trends, the history, the plans that we have for expanding. In their sanitation department, since we just established it, we're looking at are we charging the correct rates? Do we need to increase them? Do we need to decrease them? Or are there rates out there that we're not looking at? Um, Mr. <coughs> Jesko is in the audience so we can further explain what he plans to do with, the, with this study. There's no one. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Uh, glad to be of service to the city, Rio Grande City. Uh, uh, completing the update of your water and wastewater rates now, and I'm glad to submit a proposal to do your sanitation rates. Uh, I've looked at your adopted budget, and I understand the work involved, which will be to establish an operating budget for a newly formed enterprise fund as you take the service in-house. Um, I'll be looking at 
I see that you're a half a million plus for landfill tipping fees, so I'll be looking closely at that and trying to identify every opportunity to save you money and, and uh, save your ratepayers money. And uh, I, it's an honor to be back and be of service and glad to answer questions. We, we've also talked about uh, the city's plans for long-term um, issues dealing with uh, sanitation and solid and brush collection. Uh, I know we've talked about maybe uh, constructing our own transfer station, uh, how do we expand on our equipment. So all of this information he'll take into account so that we are able to fund this enterprise. How extensive is the study, Mr. Snowden, for sanitation? How extensive or, or what, what would it entail exactly again? The, the, typically, the, the, my deliverable is a slide presentation that typically is in the order of 40 to 60 slides, and I, I try to limit it to 15 when I present to you, but have the full deliverable on hand so when someone asks a question, we can answer it for research purposes, defense purposes, but um, it'll be a, a function of me looking at your budgets, looking at surrounding communities' budgets, other clients to make sure that, because you've got to start from scratch, you've got to build an operating budget right. for this. So I'll be assisting with that. I'll be looking at your deal with the landfill. Um, I'll uh, also be auditing your ENCODE billing system to determine make sure that the rates that you have been charging are correct and to hopefully help you in your some of your legal efforts with uh, just with the whole enterprise fund okay. um, but that's that's what I'll do and there'll probably be a whole lot of other things that come up and I typically I've never asked y'all to do a change order or any other client and <laughs> typically I'll tell you if y'all ask me for additional help I usually just say yes and do it all right thank you Mr. Snowden <coughs> Uh, other cities that you've conducted this study for? Other cities? Uh, here in the Valley, my clients include uh, West Laco Alton, Laguna Madre Water District, San Benito, San Juan. Uh, I'll have to thank the um, Laredo Eagle Pass, Zapata, Catula, Carrizo Springs, Pearsall. Um, All right. So. Good. Good. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. You Very entertain good. a motion. That's a move, Mayor. Okay. Second. Motion to approve. Have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Snowden. <coughs> and Jeff Snowden, as in the Jeff Snowden CIA, I uh, know, <laughs> is that the. <laughs> A uh, cousin, <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, isn't he somewhere outside of the U.S. or one of those? <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, we have item 5B, uh, discussion and possible action for city engineer to be assigned additional service as permitted and uh, set contract. Yes, uh, uh, the last meeting we had... Um, uh, talked about the lift station project and as to how we needed to go back and redesign the lift station, uh, the lift station uh, design. Um, we've already gone through a process with Melvin and Hunt and we got to a point where we couldn't use those plans or designs. And so uh, we opted to look into whether we could uh, go forward with uh, uh, allowing our current city engineer to um, take that on, given that they already know our business uh, inside out and it would probably take a lot less time for them to pull it off and a lot less uh, costly. So uh, we met with our um, uh, legal um, department and talked about, you know, whether we could do that. And so far, he's looked at the contract as to how it's set up, and he's advising us that we can uh, okay. proceed on that. Okay. Yeah, we reviewed the contract, and uh, there's, uh, there's a clause in there that allows the current city engineer to do it. So at this point, they could start tomorrow on this project. Yes, in he's sense. estimating uh, 30 to 45 days to have it finalized, uh, and then pretty much that's it. Do we know the cost? He is working on it. Uh, it'd be significantly less. Uh, uh, okay. He should have something probably by next week, estimation-wise. But in a sense, we're doing it in-house type yes. of. Yes. Okay. And at this point, uh, is he, are they 
Were the previous engineers uh, uh, Advice. paid for their services? They still have an ongoing contract which has not been taken action for the determinate or not. Right, but they've been paid for the design. And yes. The, and then it, was there any outstanding? The uh, only uh, cost, it's a minor cost on their bidding process, and that was it. Uh, that will be reimbursed by the state. Uh, just know that any additional engineering design costs will not be reimbursed by Texas Water Development Board. Correct. Yeah, and then whether we stuck with uh, Melvin and Hunt or we went anywhere else, we would be stuck with those additional Right. At, at the end, we're going to be stuck. However, how do we not repeat the same process? Because at the end, this process has been lengthy. We never got anywhere. Now, what are, what are we going to so, do differently? So the, <clears throat> conceptually, is once he drafts a design, then we go through a process where we meet with the appropriate staff, including the folks that are supporting okay. the new stations, mm -hmm. and gather their input every step of the way. Alongside, we'll bring, bring it back to you after we secure all the input and say this is where we're at and this is what's being proposed. And we're gonna sure sign off along the way just to make sure we didn't leave anybody out that needs to be included. Yeah. And that's gonna be the key to make sure that people that are gonna be involved, yes. or <clears throat> were, that they need to be involved in this redesign. Ms. Araceli, do you have any comments also on this? Just what I had spoken to Mr. Bennett before and uh, commissioners and yourself, just getting the right people involved, you know, so we can get the project going since it's been a lengthy project it's been installing for years and you know we need to get it going. Okay. Is there any timeline Ms. Bales? Uh, I know some of the funds are, are grant monies uh, and I know it's been uh, we've been at it from since 2013. I'm reading this right now I'm recalling I know it's been several years but it's been actually four years and we're pretty much the same Well it is spot. a loan. It's a loan from Texas Water Board. We are already paying <clears throat> on that loan currently. Um, like, like I mentioned, the, the redesign and the new engineer, that will go through. And uh, after the local process of reviewing and approving, it still has to go to the state. Right. And they have to approve it and say, OK, you're ready to go out for bids. Uh, we are, you all remember, under TCQ agreed orders and violations for this lift station. So it is, we need to move on it. It's urgent. It's in the fast track. Let's get it done. Uh, the agreed order uh, that we have right now, uh, that we got fined for 9000 we will have to pay it because it was based on the design by Melbourne Hunt. Because we're changing the design, then therefore that nulls and uh, voids that agreed order. So, so we're going to have to pay the 9000 sum um, to move forward. Mm -hmm. But as the timeline, as long as we're paying the loan, we'll, we'll, it's, it falls more on us to get those lift stations back in order. Right. Okay. Okay, so with all that said, staff recommends to moving forward on this? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right, nice little moment. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye opposed. <coughs> carries. Next, uh, business and orders item six, contracts and agreements. Letter A, discussion and possible <coughs> action to approve the lease agreement with Melissa Perez, um, Vintage Willow by Melissa for rental space at 410 East Main Street, Suite B. We already have the contract. We have signed. the contract. We, you, uh, we had already reviewed the uh, details about the contract. It was just the uh, process of getting the signature from them and your signature on the contract. Okay, so we're good to go. Nothing's changed as far as the details that you previously approved. Okay. All right. We entertain the motion. <clears throat> Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Garza. Let's have a motion. We have a second by Commissioner Ramirez. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed. She carries next is 6B, discussion and possible action to approve the renewal of a lease agreement with RGCDC for premises at 406 East Main Street, Lopez Tijerina Complex. So ADC has been using the Tijerina Complex, and uh, we, of course the uh, arrangement is that they uh, maintain the complex, uh, so this is just a continuation of that. Okay. okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Garza. Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Aye. She carries next is 6C, discussion and possible action to approve the renewal of a lease agreement with the Behavioral Health Solutions of South Texas for premises at 101 South Washington Street, Kelsey Bass Building. 6C. Um, 
Behavioral Health Solutions of South Texas have already been uh, on that location. I believe they're on the second floor. Yes, sir. Are they still there? Mm -hmm. Yes, they still use it. Okay. We have the uh, exit <coughs> to the back of Palmira Solis. Okay. And help me if that's behavioral that, health... Or they go up the, the stairway that's in, in the back? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that a storage room? No? It was clear, cleared out when we moved. Okay, is this a, are these the same individuals that were providing counseling for municipal court? Yes, sir. Okay, are they still doing that? Because the last conversation I had with the judge did not seem like they were providing services for him. If that's the case, then why would we renew this? If there are cases referred to him, they will look at uh, to them by the judge. They will uh, counsel with them. I know that they deal mostly with the schools. Um, okay, but MHMR. going back to the judge, the judge said that they're not using his services. If that's the case, then yeah. can we find out? Them. I haven't seen them there. I do know that. I don't know. <clears throat> You've seen them sometimes. I use them. I haven't seen them in a while. In a while. Uh, I know they're there before, but I know the special crimes unit's been using that space for a while. The thing, right? They must have lost funding or something. Can we find out from the judge? Uh, table? Yes. Table. Okay. Right. <clears throat> You made a motion to table. Okay, so make a motion um, yes, to I make a motion, to table. A motion to table. We have a second by Commissioner <coughs> Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. aye opposed. Table next is item 6D, discussion and possible action to ratify the grant application to the Anish Reed Fund for a grant for Main Street to repair benches. Yes, Mayor Commissioner, there was an opportunity um, I know Ms. Guillen forwarded to, to our major coordinator, Belinda Pavino, to see if we could uh, apply for this application. It was due on the 31st, therefore we had to submit it, and we're now asking for ratification. It's a small grant from the Downtown Association. Uh, you all know some of the benches on Britain Boulevard are broken, so I know Belinda, you're here. Okay, entertain a motion. Mr. Right, Mulmer. So okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Ramirez. I have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. I, I think uh, Mr. Jump on. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed. Motion carries. Next is item 6E, discussion and possible action to ratify the contract budget amendment to the grant for the security cameras from South <coughs> Texas Development Council. Mr. Milan. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. This is the uh, ratification of the contract budget amendment to the grant for the security cameras from the South Texas Development Council. This is the grant to uh, purchase the uh, surveillance cameras to combat illegal dumping for <coughs> code enforcement. We had an increase. Uh, they are giving us an additional $6,195, totaling uh, $34,175. The original amount was 27180 It had to be signed and ratified at this meeting because we had a deadline of August 31st. So otherwise, the funds would be returned to the state. So they're not going to be returned to the state. We're getting that additional monies. And uh, actually, the cameras should be arriving any day now. Oh, good. We should be having them installed by what's, what are we looking at date? should be very user friendly and uh, like I said, these cameras, we have uh, personally seen them in action and we got also the support from the city of McAllen, so. No, but by when, by when will they be up and running? So Timeline. Probably a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. Are, they, are they gonna be installed in house or are they gonna be uh, installed by the company that's gonna provide the cameras? We wanna get somebody to install them. Uh, the company, uh, they don't install them themselves, but according to them, they should be, okay. like I said, very user friendly. And uh, like I said, we have the support from the city of McAllen also. They are gonna give us tips and they might be willing to come and, and guide us on how to install them. Perfect. All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. We entertain a motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second by Commissioner Jones. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed? She carries. 
Next, business and orders item seven, executive session, chapter 551, Texas government code section 551.071, consultation with attorney 551074, personal matters and 551.087, economic development matters. It is 7.13 p.m. Number eight, reconvene into regular session, letter A, there was no action, letter A, no action on, let me see, on letter C, C no action on D. Get on to item 8B. We have a motion. Yes, Mayor, I'll make a motion, a motion to authorize city attorney to revise city policy as discussed in executive session. Okay, have a motion, okay, have a second by Commissioner Garza. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed. She carries. All right. Number nine, adjournment. <coughs> we have a motion. Oh. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Jones. We have a second. I guess it was uh, a mistake. <laughs> okay, we have a second by Commissioner Ramirez. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. opposed. She carries. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Oh, it is. 7.51 p.m.